Hello and welcome. Recently I was sent this. This is the Gene Paul TR860 Trumpet. It is something that they've sent me to review uh, and it can be yours from just 700 US dollars, just under 700 US dollars. They list this as a professional grade trumpet so I thought what we'd do today is uh, after I've sort of given you a walkthrough of the instrument is I'd give it to a professional to give his thoughts on it because he is much better than I am. Let's start by taking a quick visual inspection of the instrument. We have engraving all throughout the bell. It's not overdone, it's, it's uh, fairly restrained, but it adds a nice visual touch. Uh, we have the lovely power shell or abalone shell finger buttons at the top. We've got the beveled edges, um, sort of hexagonal shape on the finger buttons and an uh, octagonal uh, on the uh, valve caps top and bottom. Um, we have a third valve finger ring which is soldered in place, it's not adjustable, which is something that you do tend to see on the higher end instruments. Um, the adjustable ones tend to be lower down, but I prefer the adjustable ones because these are never in the right place for somebody with my sized hands. We've got a thumb saddle on the first valve tuning slide, which is fine. We have Armado water keys, so we don't have our normal our normal water keys. Um, the water keys are actually, I've got a bit of a beef with them because you try to empty water out of your instrument and you sort of have to do it at this position and then at this position at that position to get it all out. It doesn't seem to be optimally placed to be able to drain your instrument in one quick fluid motion, no pun intended. So it's sort of something that you just have to get used to. Uh, but the big thing that this has is a reversed lead pipe. What I mean by a reverse lead pipe is that where the lead pipe, which is this section here, connects to your main tuning slide, which is this adjustable bit here, on a normal trumpet, the tuning slide goes inside the lead pipe, whereas on a reversed lead pipe, the first part of the tuning slide here goes on top of the lead pipe. The school of thought behind such a design is that it uh, gives you a free freer flowing, a freer blowing experience. It reduces some of the resistance, it gives you a more open sound because, um, and it potentially gives you a little bit more power because the lead pipe itself is longer. And uh, the length of the lead pipe is one of the components that helps increase the strength of your sound when you play uh, one of these instruments. Looking at the design of the valves, these are certainly very nice. We have lovely copper ports through the valves. Uh, they are monol coated, monal coated, however that's pronounced. We've got nylon valve guides and a uh, what looks like is it a bronze spring? I'm not sure what the spring's made out of, but it's very nice. It, it, it looks fine. Um, there's certainly no complaining about the aesthetic qualities of the instrument. As far as playing it is concerned, uh, my own personal views is that it's a lovely instrument to play. It's quite bright in terms of tone quality. Uh, if you were to compare this with a, a heavier, bigger trumpet, then you would find that uh, this does give you a much brighter, brassier sound. Uh, so it's probably more suited for something in where that sound is desirable, like in a jazz group or something like that, as opposed to the classical context. Uh, but that's not to say you can use the trumpet, you can't use the trumpet for a classical context. It just means that in order to get the sound that you want, you might have to use a mouthpiece that helps darken that tone quality. I've had two professional trumpet players that I know have a go on this instrument, one of which I'm going to show you in a bit because it's on video. Uh, the other one... The other professional trumpet player that I had uh, have give this instrument a try out, his thoughts were that, again, it's quite bright, um, but he normally toots on a bark strad, and he says that if anything happened to that, he would not mind playing something like this. So he would feel that in, his, uh, in the bands that he plays for professionally, something like this would not be a disadvantage. Um, so even though it is made in China, even though it is you know, vastly cheaper than what you could expect to pay for a professional grade instrument, it is something that he feels wouldn't hold him back. Last week I had a visit from a man, uh, his name was Bruce, he uh, used to be the principal trumpet of the Christchurch Symphony Orchestra here in New Zealand, he's now uh, a tutor as well as various other things, uh, groups that he plays in, and uh, I took some video with him and this is what he had to say. What do you think of the reverse lead pipe? Um, 
interestingly enough, I didn't used to like them at all, but I've got to like them now. Yeah. Maybe they're a bit more efficient. It just means that the uh, with with the longer lead pipe, because that, obviously that's where the um, where, your, where your lip vibration goes first. I'll just put that You've back. You've gone and broken it, haven't you? I know. <laughs> uh, just, just with a long lead pipe, it, 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 it's, um, it's designed to stabilise the intonation of the instrument. Really, the lead pipe after the mouthpiece is the most important part of the instrument. It's not a bad, bad little horn, is yeah. it? Yeah, I quite like it. There you go. Fantastic. Well worth the money, I'd say. Yeah, good. Thanks to Gene Paul for sending this trumpet to me to have a look at. If you're interested in getting one for yourself, then there is more information in the link in the video description. Thanks very much for watching. Mm -hmm.